All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on the F the Nice Guy podcast today. I am super excited. I have a very special guest. Her name is Naya. And as much as we always wonder how the nice guys happened, why the nice guys happened, Naya is coming with the science behind it. So <laughs> so welcome, Naya. Hi, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I am so excited. I have been thinking about this ever since we started talking. Um, <laughs> so I just would love to get into the study that you did basically on kind of people with the mentality of the nice guy. So the study um, was a collaboration with one of my advisors. I have two PhD advisors. So um, this was a collaboration with one of them and another grad student who uh, primarily studies incels and all that fun bunch, there it of, is. <laughs> bunch of guys. There's the word. Um, <laughs> but it was really actually born out of my uh supervisor kind of playing around with some data and noticing a really interesting pattern in men's sexism. And uh, in psychology, when we talk about sexism, there are kind of two two sides of the coin. There's um, hostile sexism, which is what you think about when you think of sexism. It's really overtly negative attitudes toward women, Mm -hmm. um, degrading perceptions of women and hostility toward them. But there's also benevolent sexism, which on the surface appears kind um, and flattering of women, kind of the nice guy persona, um, but really is degrading and demeaning. Could you give an example of that? So when we, when we measure it, uh, when we try to assess people's levels of benevolent sexism, it's things like um, women should be put on a pedestal by their man or things about like women being cherished and protected and provided basic provided for because they can't do it themselves. Right. At the end of the um, day, underneath, it's like because they're weaker be- and they- because they're weak and incompetent. Right. So it's like on oh the God. surface, on the surface, it's complimentary. Sure. Women should be cherished. Um you know, uh, a a man is not complete without a woman, things that kind of set women and men as opposite coins and show us as complementary to each other. Sure. Um, But so typically what we see across cultures, um, across samples is that when men are high in hostile sexism, so when they are really, really just hateful toward women, they have to offset it with high benevolent attitudes because Mm -hmm. otherwise- we won't sleep with them. Right. And (laughs) like, if men just hate us, we won't pay them any attention so they can get away with hating us if they do so in a way that's also like, oh, but I don't mean it. I'm just saying these things to you because like, you don't know any better for yourself. Uh. So, so, so these two types of sexism have been kind of theorized to work together to maintain men's status over women, because as women, we kind of control access to like reproduction, right? Men's goal is typically to reproduce, but they have to get to us and they can't if they hate us. So they have to pretend that they like us. So (laughs) yeah, it's it's so good. It's so so, I'm so glad. It's so, It's, it's so fun. I love also that like, as a lesbian, like I'm just like out in no man's land. <laughs> like when they're like, well, literally, literally, <laughs> literally no man's land. <laughs> literally. And they're just like, they don't even like, I don't even enter their mind. You're there. I'm like yeah. over here like, Hey, so I'm just yeah. like the flaw in your system, but that's yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah. Right. God. So, so yeah. So, so typically, um, hostile sexism and benevolent sexism are positively related. So if someone is low and hostile, they're low and benevolent. If they're high and hostile, they're high and benevolent because they have, they work together, right? You can't have one without the other. Yes. So, um, my advisor was playing around with some data and, um, she noticed that it seemed like instead of like a straight line, a positive relationship, it looked like the relationship kind of curved. So, As you got to higher levels of hostile sexism, it seemed like men's benevolent attitudes started to decrease. Oh, and she was like, that's really interesting. We should, like, we should see, my cat's playing with a toy. Um, <laughs> we love it. Uh, she was like, we should see, like, if that pattern holds and and who those guys are. Yeah, sure. So we um, basically aggregated data from a ton of different published studies that measured hostile and benevolent sexism. I think we had a total of like 20,000 participants in our data set. Oh my gosh. And instead of fitting a linear model that shows that as hostile increases, benevolent increases, we tried to test um, a curved model. Um, And we did find that like, there's kind of a cutoff point of hostile sexism where men just 
denounce benevolence. They just start being extremely hostile and there's no complimentary positive attitudes toward women. And those are kind of pure misogynists. So is is that like when the guys get to the point where they post the videos in their car, like, oh, I'm done being nice to women. Like we're, yeah. this is right, over. right. And it's, and I think it's really because like, benevolent sexism to me is really like a facade, right? You're pretending to like women because you want access to our bodies and you don't really want to get to know us or anything. No. And so if you're putting in all that effort and you don't actually like us at some point, you're going to be frustrated and you're going to give up. Right. So I think, I think that's what we're seeing is these men who don't really like women. They have extreme negative views of them and they just can't even, or they aren't bothered to like pretend anymore, which honestly I would much prefer to like a man who does have high hostile attitudes yes. and is also like pretending I to like- value me. Like, just be straight up. Just tell me you hate me. Like, I know. I feel the same way too. It's like, just, just be flat out. Like if you hate women, if you don't think they should have the same rights, if you're mm-hmm. using them as a sex object, truly Mm -hmm. um just go ahead and say that just go ahead right off the bat day one just just let it out and those guys in those videos they always start out with like i love females but Uh, blah 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 they already did it they already said female not (laughs) now but like and they and they pretend that they do like value and respect us and then go on to say the absolutely most demeaning and insulting things yeah so so yeah so we were we our data and and these analyses showed that this kind of curved model was a better predictor of men's sexism. So while the two are kind of positively related, this testing this curvilinear model gave us a better idea of exactly how hostile and benevolent sexism are related. And so there's this, like I said, kind of a cluster of men who are really at the extreme end of hostility toward women, and they Mm -hmm. don't have that complementary positive set of attitudes to kind of offset it. Um, so we wanted to know like what drives that, who are those guys? And those maybe are kind of the opposite of the nice guy, right? They don't even, they don't even pretend to, um, to like us. They're just like, (laughs) women are, women are the worst and I don't want to protect them. And I don't want to put them on a, on a pedestal. Like they don't deserve it. So, um, yeah, it's so fun. (laughs) So that would be, I guess it would be like, Nice guy, nice guy, nice guy. And then and, just And you out. see that almost with like nice guy progression where yes. nice guys like lose their shit, where they're like, <laughs> you can bleep that. But where they're like, <laughs> I'm tired of being a nice guy when yep. really what they mean is like, I'm tired of like pretending to respect women. Mm. I'm tired of being sexist in a way that's like not overt. Yes, right? that's, a, because, that's a great point. Yeah. Right, They never want to actually be friends with women. Right. Or get to know us or like learn about our hobbies or our oh, interests. God. They just like are upset that we don't want to go on a date with them. I'm tired of playing pretend because that whole time it was a lot of energy for me to act like I cared what you were saying. Yeah. So I'm just going to be done yeah. with that. It's Ugh. definitely it, it feeds into a lot of other work that I do on like objectification of women and dehumanization, like really just seeing us as like a commodity or a prize or kind mm-hmm. of a thing devoid of like personality and human sure. value. Sure. Um, which is also just the best. <laughs> <laughs> no um, big deal. No, no big, big deal. deal. I just, yeah, am just an object. Just the literal object with no feelings, wants, desires, or boundaries that you need consent for. Huh. Right. Right. Great. So, so we wanted to figure out what was driving this. Like, why are some men just, just hostile yeah. and they don't have this complimentary benevolence that typically they should have. And we, um, we tested a few different, what we call moderators. So things that might impact the strength of the relationship. And we thought maybe it's men who are low in like SES, like men who don't have money, maybe they feel Mm. like they're not good enough for women. So these very kind of objective forms of status. And we also tested men's kind of perceived structural status. So we show them like a picture of a ladder and we say, this is a ladder that represents all the men in in the world at the top are the best men with the best resources and the most money at the bottom is the lowest men. Like, where do you think you rank? And they put themselves on a ladder. Interesting. And then we also measured their perceived mate value. So how they felt, how how much they felt they could contribute to our relationship and um, 
if they had, you know, good qualities to bring to our relationship. Mm -hmm. And we tested all of those as uh, moderators. And we actually found that it was men who feel that they don't have much to provide to a relationship. Men low in perceived mate value who show this high hostility um, with low complementary benevolence, which is again, it's like, okay, so it's a you problem. Like you feel like you don't have much to provide. Maybe you can work on like being a better partner, but instead you're just going to be aggressive toward Mm -hmm. women. (laughs) Um, Okay. (laughs) Cool. Thanks. Mm. So, so yeah, it's, it's really just based on like wanting a heterosexual relationship with women and then feeling like you can't achieve it. And then we did another study where we, we replicated that and we looked into it a little bit further. We looked into kind of aspects of mate value Mm -hmm. that predict this and, um, we tested resentment toward women, which I personally thought was going to be um, like a significant variable, but it wasn't. It was hmm. um, men feeling like they can't protect and provide for women that kind of drives this. So again, it's like these patriarchal norms put on men sure. by other men sure, that then translates into hostility toward women. So yeah, so, so fun. (laughs) Um, Really, really good. And I I believe I have to double check, but I believe our last study, we only looked at single men Mm -hmm. since we realized that it was like men who feel that they can't really provide to a relationship. We didn't want to study men who were in relationships. It's, it's crazy though. You know, the fact that they were evaluating themselves, that it wasn't like a woman, because I feel like their message is generally, and this is off of I did not do a study, but I do watch a ton of things and I do get tagged in a lot of these men's uh, confessionals and Uh uh, as well as my own experience. And it's always put as if it's, well, the woman doesn't see my potential. And yet in their own evaluation, they're putting, they're putting themselves as low. Yes. From what I have seen of like incel forums Uh, and conversations. Yeah. Unfortunately. Get me out here. Unfortunately, I've seen some, some of that. Um, They're really self-loathing. Like a a big thing is like, they'll post a selfie and Mm -hmm. they'll like ask guys to like, like critique their appearance. Like Like, Yeah, kind of. They're like, this is why I can't get girls because I look like this. Like it's very self-deprecating. Yikes. Yeah. (laughs) I know. I'm like, I'm over here just like gasping. Um, You know, what's interesting is I just did a, a um on tiktok i just did a critique i guess it's just me yelling about these guys Fair. but this this guy who i i mean obviously not my cup of tea with my orientation mm-hmm. but i didn't think he was a bad looking guy mm-hmm. like at all i i didn't i i thought he was i thought he was like a decently attractive person and he rated himself as a six in the video which yeah is just barely above average and then, you know, he said, but you have to get past the six to get to the 11 personality, which again, okay, he rated right. himself so right. in the video. I didn't talk about it as much because that's not really what I'm there to do is like, hey, buddy, don't think so low of yourself. But right, right. at the end of the day, it is interesting because was I was I in a place of not being so upset by what he was saying? I may have been inclined to be like, hey, friend, mm-hmm. Um it seems you have a self-esteem issue, right? You are thinking low of yourself Mm -hmm. in a way that you're not even being perceived that way. And I had women in my comments even say like, I would not have seen this man as a six until he started saying this stuff. Until he started talking. Right. Opened his mouth and Mm -hmm. the hate spewed. And then, um, he's like a two now, but it's, it's bizarre because at the end it is them. It's, it's their own insecurity. And it's also like, I did a video on this recently. A lot of men's behavior is Mm. for other men. It's not for women, right? So men are much more hierarchical than women are. Like they kind of constantly have to be performing their manhood in a way that women don't. Like you never hear people tell a woman to woman up or say, you're not a woman if you like wear blue. But if men wear pink, they're gay, they're not a man. So there's always this, visible social performance that men have to be doing and it's only for other men yeah and so I think 
the kind of standards that men have internalized that they think are what women want <laughs> are they're actually what what men right. want like I don't want a super muscular macho guy that goes to the gym right, right. I don't know where you came up with that but it sounds <laughs> where like is what, that coming from sounds like what the guys want and then when we try to be like no I like dad bod I like right. blah 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 they're like no you don't <laughs> no you don't I know what liar want. I right. know what women want and I'm like I'm a woman, like here telling you. I <laughs> actual woman speaking. The calls coming from inside the house on that one for like if you're like that's your own stuff, your 100%. own gender. Like a hundred percent. And this is why I get so frustrated when I like when I try to talk about the patriarchy mm. and how it harms men, and men see it as me saying F- men when I'm saying F- patriarchy no I'm, I'm talking about a system that's hurting you like- you personally you're a victim of the said system mm-hmm. well it's interesting because I saw um it was like a somebody breaking down the way that some people see their ideas as inherently themselves okay. like they are their idea like if I if I think this thing and then you object to said mm-hmm. thing then yeah. you object to me yes and I feel like men yes. with the patriarchy are so much like that. It's like, if I am a, I am so ingrained into the patriarchy, I think things that the patriarchy has in, like, has, you know, ra- I've been raised in it. So I have been mm-hmm. raised in this idea. And so if you attack the patriarchy, you're attacking me. Yes. Yeah. It's the same. <sighs> if you talk about toxic masculinity, they think yes. you're saying men toxic, yes. that men are toxic. And then they try to flip it and say, well, you're a toxic feminist. And I'm like, well, that's not what those words mean. Like, (laughs) that's just not at all. Like, you can be a man. You can be a man devoid of toxic masculinity. Yes. It's possible. But yeah, they really can't decouple the system from themselves, which is kind of sad. It's very sad. Like, ugh. Because imagine how, how much like their relationships would be so much more fulfilling if there wasn't this social pressure from other men to like not show emotion and yes. you know be able to like bond with men and women not just pursue women for sex but actually like have relationships with women that are meaningful like yeah they would have such happier lives truly i mean i i saw um i believe it was trevor noah and he was talking about mm-hmm. um, i know the video you're talking yeah about. oh god so good but just the idea of intimacy. Mm -hmm. And I, to be honest, when someone is like explaining why it's okay for men to treat women in a, in a bad way. And he wasn't saying it was okay, but he was just kind of speaking to the man side of that. Mm -hmm. I usually am like, like I, (laughs) it's very hard to watch um, when you're uh, the victim of that behavior. But I, I'm glad that I paid attention because when he was speaking to the idea of men think that they lack sex, right? They think that that is what they're missing. And actually what they're missing is intimacy. Yep. So many men do not have people that they are intimate with, like friendships where they can be open and honest and discuss their feelings. Right. Yeah. The only time they might get physical affection and some type of emotional bonding is during sex. During sex. And even then it's like, I don't think they are getting that from sex if it's not with women who they care to like learn about or know about. They think that it's going to come automatically. Yes. And then it doesn't. I feel um, it's sad, you know, as much as it makes you mad, but it also makes you sad because you're like, that's not like, it's not even intimate when it should be intimate, I guess is my point. Doing sex to someone rather than like having sex with someone, Uh, you know? Oh my God. That was perfectly phrased. That's a (laughs) hundred percent what it is. Yeah. And then, you know, we internalize how men view us because it's around us 24 seven in the media, in our interaction. So we self-objectify, right? Ugh, um, least we, favorite thing. Least favorite thing. We yeah. internalize this observer's perspective when we become super preoccupied with how we look at all times and our appearance. And it's no surprise that that's related to sexual dysfunction in women. Mm. Um, Cause we're, we're separated from our bodies. We're seeing ourselves as objects. So it all really just feeds into each other. The self-objectification is such a mess. Um, <laughs> truly, I mean, I how, wait, how old are you? 27. 
So you're right there. Okay. <laughs> Cause I feel like at 30 is when I started unpacking mm-hmm. yep. a maturity of all that. I'm like, yep. wait, it's because- also, it's, it's when we kind of start to escape the male gaze, right? So mm-hmm. self-objectification follows kind of a life course at peaks in adolescence when we unfortunately start being, you know, the target of sexual harassment. Yeah. And it kind of steadily increases through early adolescence. And then we hit like 26, 27 and men are like, you're no longer useful to me. I'm not going to look at you anymore. You're going to be like a haggard old woman soon. And we kind of are able to finally like escape that. Sure. Self-objectification decreases and we can like finally live our lives. Oh my God. I didn't even put that together. (laughs) Yeah. It's so fun. Sometimes, sometimes I wish that I was like ignorant and like didn't study (laughs) all of this because I feel like knowing everything just makes me more angry. It, you know what? It makes you more angry, but it also makes you uh, more aware. And it, at the end of the day, it allows you to, to cut out as much toxicity as you can. Like I've gone through, there's so many like friendships and uh, partner, whatever it is that now I am like, oh, oh, yeah. that's what you were doing this whole time. We can yep. get clip that and go ahead and cut you loose. Yep even though on the day-to-day it is so much more frustrating. (laughs) Yeah. And I feel like when you emailed me and you were like, if you have a nice guy story, let me know. And I was trying to think, I was like, do I have a nice guy story? (laughs) And I realized that I kind of like, I'm able to filter them out really quickly because I can like, See all of these patterns of well, there's just like, there's telltale signs, right? Like Mm -hmm. anytime a man calls a woman, a female right off the bat. Bye. (laughs) Bye, 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 bye. Um, (laughs) just basic personality traits that I'm like, I know that calling women females is dehumanizing. I know that that probably relates to having sexist beliefs about women. I know that if men are super fixated on their appearance, they probably also expect women to be super fixated on their appearance, which isn't me. Like (laughs) I can kind of filter through a little bit. It's like a pre-screening of applicants, you know? Well, that's good because I struggled at (laughs) pre-screening. Yeah. Because yeah, I guess- it's the, um, what, what did you call it when it's benevolent? Like yeah. the benevolent sexism is something, one, I didn't know that term until you. So thank you. I picked up, I think you've talked about it in a different video perhaps. Mm-hmm. Um, but that one was so under my radar that like, I was like, I got to look out for really aggressive, malignant, like. Exactly. Scary. And then when someone did, I, I took benevolent sexism as a positive. Like right. I thought as like, oh, like sometimes it can seem like chivalry sometimes. Yeah, a hundred percent. But then it's yeah. like, okay, but like, what's the motivation for right. it? Right. What's the intention? And like, are you, are you just, are you trying to get with me at the end? Of, like, is that what it is at the end of the day? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. God. And and really that's what this kind of, we call it ambivalent sexism theory. That's what it was born out of was this mm. recognition that like women basically control men's access to reproduction and evolutionary perspectives say that men should be more interested in reproducing a lot compared to women Mm -hmm. um and so how do they how do they do it if they don't really like us well they gotta like pretend to to pretend play pretend yeah Mm -hmm. well it's interesting too because like i think everyone's every gender's mental health matters every gender like that's important for everybody. Mental health is an epidemic right now, but it's only now like that, that's you heard, I'm sure you heard the study, like at the, uh, the percentage of men who aren't having sex that's going down. Yep, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I'm like, Oh, now, Oh, yep. now we're interested in this. Like, Oh, now it matters. And it's like, it wasn't until it was oh s- access to sex that they're like, Oh, we got to exactly. do something. <laughs> exactly. And I found that uh, report so interesting mm. um, because it really again it shows <clears throat> that like now that women like don't have to rely on marriage to survive yes. right like we yes. can have our own bank account and credit <gasps> card imagine and job like I think women were only given the the ability to have a credit card in like 1972 oh like, my god and I uh. think bank, bank accounts were like close to then like marriage was a necessity 
yeah. men were entitled to it and they didn't have to put in the work to actually attract a mate, right? It was right. a survival strategy for women. Yes. And now we can survive on our own and we right. are and we're thriving and men don't, they, they want the relationships that their parents and their grandparents had. Oh, like, yeah. We aren't settling for them anymore because we're no. not forced into them. And so we want to mm. date people maybe who actually like and respect and value us and yep. can contribute emotionally, you know, to the relationship. Mm. And, and it, there's never been an emphasis for men to like develop those skills. Yeah. There's another study that I just saw. You probably saw it floating around. It was looking at um, women's sex drive uh, in heterosexual relationships as a function of how much of the household labor they do. Mm. And so when women... Um, do a higher proportion of the household labor, they feel less sexual attraction toward their partner, but it's explained by, I believe they explained it by feeling like women reported feeling like they were the caretaker, feeling like yes. they were the person's mother and that Ooh. explained lack of sexual desire. So it's like, even if you have a, a wife at home, if she's doing all the labor and feeling like your caregiver that's not gonna, you know, form a romantic sexual attraction. Like that's I, not what we're interested in. <laughs> I feel like that's not addressed enough. Like if you make a woman be your mother, she does not want to have sex with no, you. No, she's like, gonna treat you like a child. Right. Not they, a partner. It's like, do, like it, I, they just need to take it like one more step. Like, mm -hmm. okay, like think about mm -hmm. that you're making her parent you. What does a, does a woman want to do that? Like as a parent? No. That's going to be a total turnoff. Like, mm -hmm. how do we not go there? Right. I know great men. There are great men out there. But misogyny is is running rampant and the patriarchy is for real. So, like, in order to not be that, you have to actively fight against it. Yeah. A lot of them, too, like, I feel like when I've had those conversations, they're like, well, I didn't, like, I don't see women being harassed. I don't see it happening. Like, when does it happen? And it's like all the time. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't think men in the same way that you like, didn't recognize what benevolent sexism was. I think they're on the lookout for these like terrible oh. forms of, of aggression when really it's like the guy whistling at me from the street, Yeah, which seems like a compliment, right? It's that seems like a yes. positive you, Oh, you should be grateful. It was a compliment. Don't, don't be so serious. <laughs> right. Oh, my like, favorite. <laughs> Smile more. Like, Smile oh more. God. Like this? Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, creepy smile. It's bizarre when they say they don't see it or don't hear it or aren't around it. It's like, it's so ever present. Speak to any woman you know. Like, that's yep. what I always want to go to. It's like, yep. have a conversation. Yep. Like, truly. And yep. I'm not, it's not like, have a conversation. It's like, honestly, go talk to the women in your life mm -hmm. and ask them. And don't like... Like, I feel like sometimes men will like do that and then they don't believe what we're saying or they say right. that we're exaggerating. Like, like right. have a conversation and actually listen and like treat our accounts as valuable and real. Yeah, I'm working on my dissertation now, which is all about the consequences of experiencing sexual harassment. And yeah. I've, every study that I'm reading to cite in the background finds that women experience like different forms of sexual harassment at least once a day. They have studies where, you know, women like on their phone, they're asked to reply, like fill out a, a survey as soon as they experience a form of sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. And literally it's like every day. Well, so. that that's always been interesting because there's like the one in four, one in three mm -hmm. experience assault or whatever. And one, I think that's not, I, don't, I think it's probably more than that, but also just the idea of like, even if it's not to the extreme, I don't know a single woman over the age of like, like, let's be kind and say 15. Like, yep, yep. like, I don't know a single girl to woman who has not been harassed, yep. period. Yep. Like end of discussion. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like even for me, like when I, um, so I worked at a, a production place and production is there's rampant super, sexism, super male dominated. Yes. Too, right? Male dominated. Yeah. Yep. Generally speaking, we're, we're trying to change that, but, um, yeah. So, and when I started working there, I was, uh, I, I didn't, 
I think I identified as pan, but not yet. Uh, we're on that pipeline yeah. journey we're together. Like, we're I, all somewhere. <laughs> I went from not to do it. I went from like, I flop between pansexual and bisexual. Sure. Right now, I kind of fit with bisexual more. And I feel like it's easier to talk about on social media. Sure. But man, I am so close to just, <laughs> just keep on going. I know. Like, I see ya. <laughs> um, yeah, there's so many beautiful, like, non-binary trans people out there, too, that, like, you know, pan, mm-hmm. that's why pan for me. I was like, every you guys, you, you're all wonderful. Um, <laughs> Everyone come. Yeah, come, come see me if you're not toxic. Uh, but anywho, um, so I, because of that, I, I started relating to the guys that work there in one way. And there's this weird phenomenon, um, that men have with lesbians mm. where they mm-hmm. don't yeah. get where they fit in. And they make the mistake of thinking, oh, you date women and I date women. Yeah. So we must think alike and we must treat them alike, Mm -hmm. which is an error because I am like, I'm obsessed with my wife. She's the, I, I, we don't, this could be forever. So we don't need to talk, but like, I adore her. Like my life is, is all about the life we have together, making her happy. And you will never catch me talking on her ever. And she doesn't do anything that I would talk about, but I will not be talking. I will not be doing anything negative about her. So not going to happen. And these men, when my, when my uh, sexuality changed, started saying things that they had not said in front of me before, Mm -hmm. which was, degrading you know degrading or uh talking badly about their wives predominantly yeah uh talking about the attractiveness of women yeah that were not their wives <laughs> like, yep and I was like oh my god is this what it's been like the whole <laughs> time yeah because they th- I'm the type of person that like they know better to, than to say to my face like before they yeah. knew to not have co- certain conversations but then the mm. second I, they realized I liked women, they're like, oh, right. Mm-hmm. They were like, okay, well, I don't, you can know what I really think about women. Yes. But it was almost like, like we should be, this is fun. Yep. And I'm yeah. like, oh no, I'm sorry. I don't think it's fun. <laughs> yeah. No, women. I'd like to, I'd like to exit this conversation. Now. Yes. Literally like talk, talking about women's bodies, like, like just all kinds of stuff that I was like, uh, no. Like I remember one point I was walking down the street with this guy who ended up being a bad guy. And I was talking about my wife and he, he was saying bad stuff about his wife. And I was like, Oh no, I don't really have anything to say. And he literally stopped me. He's like, come on, like, come on. She's like, like, no, I actually like her. Yes. He was like, literally like, Hey, it's cool. You're I'm one of the guys almost like that was like the, the, Mm -hmm. what he was saying to me. And I was like, no, I don't want to. I do not want to ever do that. And I certainly would not speak, be speaking. If I had an issue, I would speak to her. And I certainly wouldn't be talking with the guys at work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I was like, yeah. you have mistaken me, sir. You are. Co- and, but I'm not the only like lesbian who's had that happen. I've heard other girls talk about it and like trans, Ooh, trans men, like the stuff that they start to find out a hundred percent, but they started being started hearing and witnessing and experiencing like what really goes on yep like locker room talk which i think is infuriating because why don't we just call like sexual harassment what it is exactly it's it's super fun to say like locker room talk it's like egregious sexism like awful harassment yep let's (laughs) let's stop making it cute like exactly yeah and then also like trying to like like pass it off as humor just makes it even harder to like pinpoint as sexism too it just yeah yeah. it's a joke it's like my favorite thing about doing that um is when you play dumb like you don't get the joke what do you mean can you explain that but why why is that funny and then they have to say it where they're like oh because women are stupid yes and it's like "Mm, okay I thought that was what you meant yeah anybody listening do it like if someone says something any anything like um uh racist like sexist homophobic whatever makes a, a joke in yeah just say, what do you mean by that mm-hmm. i don't get it can you explain? i don't get it can you explain it what part's funny 
And then it. watching it just go into full on like mm -hmm. atrociousness. And then you're like, oh, good. That's yeah. To your point. That's what mm -hmm. I thought you were saying. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Yeah. This study like makes me so happy because again, like there's something about the science behind something. Unfortunately, there's also like such an effort to discredit social science as oh, like, my valuable God. that even when I do present research, people are like, well, psychology isn't real science. Well, that study is biased. People are like throwing out these terms and they don't even understand like the scientific method. And that was what happened. <laughs> that you learned in like second grade. <laughs> literally, literally, like it's so clear. And that was what happened. I shared, um, I just covered research like I do yeah. um, from my, my advisor's lab. Um, she developed a theory called precarious manhood theory, mm -hmm. which uh, basically, like I was talking about how men kind of are more hierarchical than women, they have more to lose, they have to constantly be proving their manhood, but they can lose it at any minute. And this causes like extreme anxiety. Mm. And so they did a set of studies where they showed that people perceive manhood as more kind of precarious than womanhood. And that when men feel that their manhood has been threatened, they report higher anxiety mm -hmm. um, than women do. And that men's anxiety can be restored when they engage in physical aggression. So they had oh. studies where they like, they threatened men's, they threatened men's masculinity. And it's wild that, uh, how they did it. They had men either braid rope, um, or they had a wig that they had to braid and simply braiding hair instead of a rope made men feel less manly. Um, oh my God. <laughs> and then Yikes. they, and then they gave men the opportunity to either pick a boxing game or like a board game and men who had braided hair were more likely to want to do the aggressive boxing game. And then I think they repeated it and they gave everyone the opportunity to do boxing and men who had braided hair through harder punches. So they're like more aggressive, they're choosing more aggressive behaviors and also just acting more aggressive. And so I covered that research on TikTok, which again, it's peer reviewed published science. Literally, yeah. <laughs> and it was removed as hate speech. So it's, it's like- It's fact. <laughs> What does that and, mean? And I literally, like, I wasn't even giving any interpretation. I was like, this is what they did. These were the participants. This was the methods. This is what they found. Hate speech. So it's like, even when what? you pull out. Yeah. Oh, and the, the comments on that. I have them all screenshotted. I'm so glad I did before it got taken down. Please. People saying things like, you know, women don't really understand men the way they think they do. I'm so tired of seeing women, seeing girls leading the conversation on men's mental health. And it's like, okay, so. When I post my research that's all about women, they're like, this is sexist. Like, where's the research on men? Oh and so I God. do. I share the research on men, but it's not the research that they want to hear about. You and cannot so then win. There's low receptivity to hearing these things, even if you do bust out the citations and it's the facts. science. Well, yeah. it's like that, like, closed logic idea. Like, it's a circle of just like, yeah. if you say something that is in agreement with what they're saying, it validates it. If you say something that's not in agreement, it still validates it. Yeah. You you yep. can't I can't believe someone called science hate speech. TikTok did. Oh, well, somebody volume. reported it, I'm oh, sure. Probably mass so report. Many. It's like yep. I, I I block so many people. I'm like, I Oh, me too. My list is I have thousands of people blocked. Well, the thing is like and this is to anyone listening as well, you do not have to allow access to your life or your mm -hmm. content. Mm -hmm. because someone is hate like I had somebody say um oh well I don't want to block anybody this is a, a singular person this is not a brand this is right. a person who felt they didn't have the right to block someone who was harassing them like they didn't want to silence them or something mm -hmm. and I'm like uh no wrong this is like that idea of like women have to be nice yep or like feminine people have to be nice a hundred percent and like just tolerate harassment it's no, I, I, I very liberally block people and it's yes. very, it's so telling. There is always a handful of men who come in on their backup account huh. after I block them. And I'm like, this is really reflective of the fact that you completely disregard boundaries. And I bet yes. you do this in real life too. Oh, for like, sure. You know, I don't want you in my space. I don't need yeah. to hear your opinion. Oh, well, I'm going to make you hear it. They can't deal with the idea of you not listening. And this, I think there's such a confusion as to what, like- is like speech and hate speech. It's that meme, I think from the office where he was like, I'm the, I'm the target of a hate crime. Yes. And they're like, that wasn't a hate crime. And he was like, well, I hated it. Well, I hated it. <laughs> yeah. 
they have such a skill at taking beautiful things and good words and good concepts and just just hijacking them completely did you know that incel was was created by a woman actually that term no i didn't that's funny incel was a community this woman had created not about that but about loneliness she tried to create a community for people who just like chron- were chronically lonely, like had trouble finding partners. And like, she wanted to, um, she wanted to create a community of like a support system for Interesting. people. Interesting. Yes. So, so like, maybe, maybe you can't be, maybe you're having trouble romantically, but we can be friends. Right. And, and I, we can have intimate. Like it was mm, like, interesting. <laughs> nice thing. And then I guess somebody who was involved in a hate crime, like a, a violent hate crime then said, uh, called themselves an insult, a man who had hurt oh, some people pretty badly. Mm. And then it was like, Oh, this is why we can't have nice things. And like, again, like if you're not that, don't be that. If you're Mm -hmm. not that, we're not talking to you. Yeah. If we are trying to say, stop hating women, stop hurting women, stop doing sexist, misogynistic things. And you feel a ping of like, it's "Ah." because it resonates. And I feel like this is more nice guy than like really malicious, scary people. But, um, is like, they can't outright condemn those people because they know they think or have done something within that that is similar. And they know that to condemn that is to condemn themselves. A hundred percent. I know we talked a little bit about this, but what would you say to to women about like that type of behavior? I think all women should read up about these different forms of sexism Um, so that they can recognize them. Because the biggest thing is being able to recognize them. And a lot of time when men say things that are sexist, and especially when they, when like we're told things that seem sexist, but we're not really sure, we like ruminate on it. And it's super disruptive, right? If a guy makes a comment that seems nice, but is actually kind of degrading, you're like, was it sexist? Was it not sexist? Um, Like, am I dumb? Like, what's going on? Um... And again, more research from my lab, also led by my co-advisor, finds that when women are exposed to those subtler forms of sexism, it has um, more serious impacts on like our cardiovascular functioning. So we have like heightened heart rate and then we can't recover because we're like busy thinking about, did I do something wrong? What was I supposed to have done? Was that sexist? Am I overreacting? Am I just living up to the stereotype of being like an annoying woman? And so I think if you can accurately like recognize these things and label it as sexism and not worry about like, if you could have done something differently, that it will improve your life a trillion times. And also to just not be afraid to cut out anyone who exhibits any toxic behavior. Mm -hmm. Like we don't need to give people multiple chances. If you see a guy being misogynistic toward another woman or being misogynistic online, he's probably going to be misogynistic toward you. That's so true. I like, I always am like, who, who are they following? Look real quick. Just exactly. Andrew Tate's on there. Boom. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I talk about my counselor a lot on my TikTok because mm-hmm. she's like so smart. Um, but she was saying how often trauma or even just being, you know, in this male dominated system teaches you not to trust your gut. You are Mm -hmm. over and over and over. When you get a bad feeling, when you're nervous, when you're anxious, you are taught, ignore, ignore. Mm -hmm. It's Mm -hmm. fine. You're a problem. And so you get very used to ignoring that like little ping when something's not right. And I think remembering to not ignore that. And the more you don't ignore it, the more, the stronger it becomes. A hundred percent. Because we're just taught to do it. Like we're taught you know, like ignore. And to believe that guys probably have the best intentions and you should give them another shot and Mm -hmm. blow. No, no one deserves a second shot. If they do something that makes you feel uncomfortable, that's all you need. I just did a video on that. (laughs) I was literally like one and done. You're done. Yeah. 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 You're done. You're done. I guess he's done. (laughs) He's done. We we've been taught to just tolerate. And at the end of the day, we don't have to, like, there's no there's no reason to like, what more do you need when someone proves themselves to be misogynistic? That is such a deep rooted issue. Mm -hmm. It's not going to go away. It's not going to be a simple conversation. Once you see that you pretty much know it's there 
And you really don't want to wait till it's nastier forms come out because it's, I feel like it's, it allows for some truly nasty behaviors. A hundred percent. When you think you are better than the other person, smarter, deserve more, um, feel more feelings are more valid and are yeah. more human. Yeah. Um, what does that lead to? Violence. It leads to right. violence. It leads to hatred. It leads to unfulfilled relationships and more. <laughs> and more. And more. <laughs> it's like the worst infomercial. With misogyny, um, you can have this and more. Uh, <laughs> well, this has been so amazing. I feel like I've learned so much, truly. Um, you are an incredible resource and I love I love your page. Do you want to share like any, is there any social you want to share? Um, yeah. So TikTok is probably my most popular, definitely my most popular social. Um, so I'm Naya Papaya there. Um, and then on Instagram, which I'm trying to build because (laughs) I keep getting hate speech violations on TikTok. So I'm trying, I'm trying to build my Instagram, which is Roxanne Naya, which is my first and middle name. So (sighs) people can find me there too. In the event that I am no longer allowed on TikTok so fun it's so fun it's so fun um but we'll, we'll keep trying we're just gonna keep trying find just the right keep people swimming. just keep swimming okay well thank you so much for thank joining you me. yeah it was so fun and as always my friends f the nice guy 